Seven-year-old year old Ferris, a small newsboy, Bernoussi, who did not know enough to make change. Photographed in Mobile, Alabama, in October of 1914. The newspapers he holds are copies of the Mobile item, with the headline Germans are driven out of Ostend, describing the end of the siege of Antwerp in World War I. The era of industrial growth transformed American society creating a new class of wealthy entrepreneurs and a comfortable middle class the increase in industry resulted in a growth among the blue-collar working class. A spinner in the Globe Cotton Mill in Augusta, Georgia, in January of 1909. The overseer admitted she was regularly employed. This labor force was made up of millions of newly arrived immigrants and vast numbers of families migrating from rural areas to cities with the hope of job security and prosperity a spinner in the Globe Cotton Mill in Augusta, Georgia, in January of 1909. A few of the Western Union messengers in Hartford, Connecticut, they are on duty, alternate nights, until 10 p.m. The overseer admitted she was regularly employed with a dream of a better life, rural families relocated to the cities to find work. Textile mill workers in Newberry, South Carolina, in December of 1908. Sadly, most were disappointed when they arrived and discovered that the truth was not as rosy as they had been led to believe the jobs available required long hours and offered little pay. Willie, one of the young spinners in the Quidwick Company. Mill in Anthony, Rhode Island. He was taking his noon rest in a doffer box on this day in April of 1909. In most situations, every able family member was needed to work to simply keep the family above the poverty level those working included children as young as three. Callie Campbell, 11 years old picks 75 to 125 pounds of cotton a day and totes 50 pounds of it when sack gets full. No, I don't like it very much. Photographed in Potawatomi County, Oklahoma. On October 16, 1916. Young children working endured some of the harshest conditions workdays would often be 10 to 14 hours with minimal breaks during the shift. Shorpi Higinbitam, a greaser on the tipple at Bessie Mine, of the Sloss Sheffield Steel and Iron Company in Alabama. He said he was 14 years old, but it is doubtful. He carries two heavy pails of grease and is often in danger of being run over by the coal cars. Photographed in December of 1910. Factories employing children were often very dangerous places leading to injuries, and even death's machinery often ran so quickly that little fingers, arms and legs could easily get caught. Minnie Carpenter, left, photographed in November of 1908 at Lorray Mill in Gastonia, North Carolina. Minnie makes 50 cents for a 10-hour day as a spinner in the mill. The younger girl works irregularly. Beyond the equipment, the environment was a threat to children as well as factories put out fumes and toxins, when inhaled by children these most certainly could result in illness, chronic conditions or disease. A pipe-smoking messenger boy working for McKay Telegraph Company. He said he was 15 years old. Photographed in Waco, Texas in September of 1913. Children working in rural areas were not faring much better harvesting crops in extreme temperatures for long hours was considered normal for these children. Pin boys work in the arcade bowling alley in Trenton, New Jersey, on December 20, 1909. The boys worked until midnight and later. Work in agriculture was typically less regulated than factory duties farm work was often not considered dangerous or extraneous for children, even though they carried their weight and more in loads of produce and handled dangerous tools. A young driver in the Brown Mine in Brown, West Virginia, 
in September of 1908. He had been driving pack animals for one year, working from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. daily. The device attached to his cap is an oil wick cap lamp, which would be lit when the boy was working in the mine tunnels. In the United States it took many years to outlaw child labor by 1899, 28 states had passed laws regulating child labor. Young Doffers in Mollahan Mills in Newberry, South Carolina, on December 3, 1908. A doffer is someone who removes, or doffs, bobbins or spindles that hold spun cotton or wool from a spinning frame, then replaces them with empty ones. Many efforts were made to pass a national child labor law that you. Fire. Fire. I want to make the fire. An Italian boy on Salem Street on Saturday morning, offering to make fires for Jewish people on their Sabbath, in Boston, Massachusetts, in October of 1909. S. Congress passed two laws, in 1918 and 1922, but the Supreme Court declared both unconstitutional. Two young workers, a raveler and a looper, in Loudoun Hosiery Mills in Loudoun, Tennessee, in December of 1910. In 1924, Congress proposed a constitutional amendment prohibiting child labor, but the states did not ratify it then. In 1938, Congress passed the Fair Labor Standards Act. Some of Newark, New Jersey's Newsies, in December of 1909. It fixed minimum ages of 16 for work during school hours, 14 for certain jobs after school, and 18 for dangerous work today all the states in the U. A typical Birmingham, Alabama, bicycle messenger, in October of 1914. S. Government have laws regulating child labor. An injured young mill worker. Giles Edmund Newsom, photographed on October 23, 1912. Giles was injured while working in Sanders Spinning Mill in Bessemer City, North Carolina, on August 21, 1912. A piece of machinery fell on his foot, mashing his toe. This caused him to fall onto a spinning machine, and his hand went into unprotected gearing, crushing and tearing out two fingers. He told the investigating attorney that he was 11 years old when it happened. He and his younger brother worked in the mill several months before the accident. Their father, R. L. Newsom, tried to compromise with the company when he found the boy would receive the money and not the parents. Their mother tried to blame the boys for getting jobs on their own, but she let them work several months. Their aunt said now he's just got to where he could be of some help to his ma, and then this happens, and he can't never work no more like he oughter. These laws have cured the worst evils of children working in factories, photo credit, Lewis Hine Library of Congress. Bib Mill No. 1 in Macon, Georgia, on January 19, 1909. Some young workers were so small they had to climb up on the spinning frame to mend the broken threads and put back the empty bobbins.